second. There's that area of rotation that you see there. Let me take the let me take the storm reports off. Yeah, so this is uh, impacting basically the exact same location that we had just a few minutes ago from Sand Rock over towards Congo, Ringgold, and then to Berry Springs as it moves into West Georgia. So literally outlining the exact same area just to the north of Weiss Lake. So that's where that velocity is. So uh, we can go ahead and track this for me. Uh, Griffin, that would be great because we have this uh, this particular uh, camera pulled up. We've got Lynx one popped up here on the chroma key right now. Again, this storm yes. system is moving roughly at about 50 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and we can actually flip back to uh, Lynx one. That's fine. If we want to do weather one for that one. Yep, there we go. So okay, here's here's those cities that'll be impacted in this storm. So we have Menlo in about 25 minutes, and then uh, really that's kind of outside of this. There we go. So now we have Blanche down to Watson, down towards Galesville, and then Broomtown. So those were a lot of the same cities. I'm sounding like a broken record, but these are the same cities that are going to be impacted once again with these particular storms. So it starts back towards Sand Rock, but what we're tracking is this velocity right here. Uh, so Griffin, let's put on the storm relative velocity for right, uh, for right now. We can take the watch off, uh, so the yellow. So this will show up a little bit on the gray side, and then we're looking for this area of rotation near Sand Rock, Powell, and Loveless. This particular storm is tracking due east outside of Copeland Bridge, and this is moving back into northern Cherokee County. So this is going to stay to the north of center. This is essentially moving just to the south of Fort Payne. So you have Little River Canyon kind of runs this uh, line here and almost directly where you see this light green line just coincidentally. But this particular storm system is tracking towards the east, uh, just to the south of Lick Skillet near Congo. Uh, it will be impacting Blanche, Watson, Grassland, and Hurley. There's Little River, the city, and then you have Little River Canyon that basically extends from Little River all the way up towards Fort Payne there, and DeSoto State Park is uh, up there. So, and, you know, if you have anybody that's up at DeSoto State Park, make sure that they're getting these warnings as well because there's quite the quite the extensive campground up there. Uh, higher elevations over here in northeast Alabama, a little bit more rocky terrain. Not that that will impede any of this. Look at those severe winds right now. This is our severe wind tracker. So where you're seeing that that kind of maroon color, that's going to be on the strong scale. And we're having some very, very strong winds along the leading edge of this. These storms again are moving at about 50 miles per hour. And this particular storm is tracking off to the East. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, this is likely the same storm that probably was in Carbon Hill, moved through Coleman County, and then moved into Morgan County. It may be a little offshoot of that storm, but I think it might have come from the exact same um, cluster of storms there that we uh, were tracking about an hour, a little over an hour ago. So now the storm system is pushing east of Hughes Mill and now heading into Dogtown. So again, that's just a little bit uh, to the northwest of Cherokee County as it begins to enter into Cherokee County. If you live in Congo, Taft, Blanche, Watson, Grassland, go ahead and get to your safe place. Same goes for Jamestown, Broomtown, all the way down to Fullerton. Anybody inside this warning need warning zone needs to get inside your safe place. And again, you may hear the warnings going off right now and look at that. That's pretty impressive. We can see that bright green. Uh, look at that. Those wind speeds at about 70 miles per hour and that's going to be right on that front leading edge there. So that's a good way to indicate how fast the speed of the wind is. This is the velocity. So we're looking at the movement towards or away that radar right now. So keeping in mind, we're tracking this particular system right on the edge of Loveless and Powell uh, between Loveless and Powell right now heading towards Congo, heading towards Taft, Watson down towards Grass and Hurley, and then on to Gaysville, uh, Galesville, excuse me, Fullerton, Dewey, and Broomtown. If you live up in Jamestown, get to your safe spot. Same with Berry Springs, anybody that's inside of this. And look at the severe wind tracker. We have been tracking these severe winds all night long, all the way back towards Albertville, Gunnersville. And uh, wow, look at Northeast Alabama, Scottsboro. That's significant. And look at that. Uh, pretty impressive stuff there. So the wind that we're tracking right now is beginning to move over Interstate 59. This is just to the south of Fort Payne, and it's going to be moving into northern Cherokee County. It does not include the city of Cin Center. Uh, and so for right now, you're good. Same with Cedar Bluff. This storm is going to be moving just to the north of you, and I think it's going to, to clip just to the north of Powell. So uh, 
uh, the city of Powell, this, this rotation is just north of you. And there, there it is right there. Uh, we see that really well-defined notch kind of on the backside. So what we're talking about, and Griffin was talking about this earlier, starting to see some of these bowing features where you have a lot of energy from these storms forcing the storms forward. It pushes that energy towards the leading edge. You start to get that little bend or that little, uh, that little disruption in that line, and that's where we start to see the rotation. Again, it's a little kink in the flow. And so what happens is with this energy moving on the backside, it's pushing a lot of that energy of that storm forward. And now what we've created is a very strong gradient. So the wind has piled up, the rain has piled up, and now it's beginning to spin. And we can see how that's developing right there. And so it's evolving more into a rotating storm event that we're seeing currently. So I'll go ahead and switch over to the radar on my end, and we'll leave uh, links one up uh, over there. But let me go ahead and pop up our radar. And there we go. So here is a look at uh, what we're seeing and we'll get things started over here. So there is a look at our storm team radar currently. Uh, let me do this for you real quick. Uh, let me grab the clicker from you real quick, Griffin. Okay. Here for you. All right. Thank you. All right. So now we're just putting our hand tracker into motion right now kind of going from a show mode to wall to wall mode for you. All right, so as we're tracking this line of thunderstorms in East Alabama, we are going to keep a watchful eye on the developing situation now in East Alabama. Let me go ahead and put those warnings back on so we can see exactly where they are, uh, because at this time it looks like those warnings are going to be really just on the eastern edge of our viewing area and uh, keeping that kind of top of mind right now. All right, um, let's see. So as we track these storms, we're looking off at these storms in the east, in the eastern part of the state for right now. That's where the, the main threat's going to be. So north of Anniston, again, this is really going to stay north of center at this time. And this is where we're seeing that tornado warning south of Fort Payne. And you'll notice it's going to re-enter West Alabama almost on the exact same trajectory that it had just a little while ago. This was actually our last tornado warning that we had when we got off the air before we had another one redevelop in Tuscaloosa. So it's interesting that it's really this exact same location and nearly the exact same warning as well. A live look, you can see that in our Gadsden Tower Cam. And look at the lightning uh, with that storm. And we're actually starting to see the lightning with this storm system north of Cherokee County starting to develop a little bit more. So anywhere from Maynard to Fort Payne, intense lightning there. We're starting to see that bowing feature on the leading edge as we track this storm. I'm going to change over to our Huntsville and then uh, our Huntsville radar there where we can really get a much better idea of where this storm is and that rotation is. So now I want to zoom in towards Lick Skillet. Yes, for those of you who are not from Alabama, you might be new to the area. That is a real town. And uh, as we look at the, the radar currently, we are tracking some very strong winds. I want to indicate how strong those winds are, about 57 miles per hour. If there's some rotation, we could be looking at wind speeds upwards of 80 or 90 miles per hour in this area. So this is a significant uh, wind event. Now, there's not really a debris ball on here. I haven't seen that. So I wouldn't say that we're necessarily seeing uh, evidence of a tornado on the ground. But right now, we'll actually send it over to Nate. He has some info for us. Nate? Yeah, so the, uh, yeah. the Cherokee County Okay. Uh, the Cherokee County EMA says they have some trees down and power lines down. Structural damage as well okay. in the north and west part of Cherokee County. And also the Storm Prediction Center is collaborating with the National Weather Service for possibly another issuance of a uh, tornado watch or possibly a severe thunderstorm watch. So okay. that is uh, going to be coming within, I, I don't want to say a time, but that it'll be right. coming soon, most likely. Okay, good information. Thanks, Nate. And yeah, to that point, when we had these conversations with the National Weather Service and Storm Prediction Center earlier today, it was about an hour. Uh, but like Nate said, we don't want to put a time stamp on it. It could be as soon as 10 minutes. It could be as long as 45. I mean, who knows? Uh, but those conversations help us kind of guide us as meteorologists and communicators to let you know how to prep and plan for your evening.
All right, so right now, what we're looking at is this storm kind of moving into Blanche, heading towards Waterloo Springs, down towards Grassland. Uh, and then as we look towards the northern part of Cherokee County, that's where we're going to see that evidence of uh, some pretty strong storms. Now uh, inching much closer to State Route 35 and County Road 153, heading right towards Jamestown, down towards Blanche, and into Taft, where you see this brightest green. That's where the winds are going to be the absolute strongest, and that's where we're actually starting to see maybe just a little bit of a Boeing feature there. As far as the rotation goes, it's not as uh, as evident as much as this is a, just a powerful wind event and we are seeing a little bit of kind of a curve there but as we look you know it, as I'm looking for those little couplets I'm not necessarily seeing as much of the couplet as I am seeing an intense wind event for us there so you know just something to keep in mind let me switch over to our Birmingham uh, radar not near as impressive as we look at that one so all right so here's our severe wind tracker though we are definitely looking at some very strong winds uh, there from Huntsville. So here's our shear rate as we look at our, sh okay, look at this. So this is where our very strong winds are. This is now beginning to enter into northern and western Cherokee County. This would line up exactly where Nate was mentioning that they're starting to get some damage reports right now. So keep in mind with this particular system, this is something that we're going to be tracking uh, really as it moves across the entire county. So right now, from Congo, Taft to Blanche, make sure that you're, you've are you just braced yourselves. I mean, you're likely inside. I probably don't need to tell you to get inside, but hopefully you'll be getting your family to their safe spot within your home. Lowest floor, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Stay away from windows. Be sure to grab a helmet, put over your head, grab some pillows and blankets, towels, anything to help protect you and cover you. Be sure to always wear tennis shoes. Closed toed shoes uh, are most preferable. And so this storm again making its way towards Taft Blanche in Jamestown. Now the severe weather, or there's severe wind, although this is what has been tracked and recorded there on our radar. It's likely that this is a little delayed from uh, where the actual activity is on our radar. So it kind of lines up just uh, just a scan probably behind. But for the most part, same cities are still going to be impacted. So anybody along State Route 273, so Highway 273 from Taft Blanche to Jamestown, please get to your safe spot. As we speak, this is very important. This will continue to move over towards Ringgold, Broomtown, New Moon, and Grover. And then that continues to move even further east into West Georgia. So this storm system is very potent. It's producing significant winds, dangerous winds, and potentially tornadoes. We don't have ground truth or a, a observed tornado on the ground. And we often talk about the difference between a radar indicated area of rotation versus an observed tornado. Observed tornadoes are traditionally observed with the eyes or an emergency official has reported it. And when we talk about a radar indicated tornado, this means that the upper levels of the atmosphere, we can pick up some rotation based on our velocity product just like this and that helps tell a story for us eventually if that rotation reaches our surface it, it officially becomes a tornado but this is how it has to start before it does that so we we also issue warnings when we have radar indicated tornadoes simply to give you enough time to move you and your family to those safe places so that's what's very important and there is definitely some activity in the atmosphere here i don't want to downplay this we're not seeing a really tight couplet like we would see in a uh, a tech but tornado event, but this is definitely producing some significant winds. Let's go ahead and get a get a look at some of these numbers here as far as the winds go. Uh, there we go. All right, 50 mile per hour winds. So we have seen some stronger winds, but when you look at kind of that gate to gate, what we call shear, you can add those numbers together and we're getting upwards of, you know, 70, 80 mile per hour winds. That's nothing to sneeze at tonight. This storm system again, moving into Jamestown Blanche along highway 273 there. This is going to be moving along County Road 46 down towards Broomtown. If you know where County Road 108 is near New Moon or County Road 41 out of Ringgold up through Broomtown, go ahead and get to your safe spot. Cherokee Road out of Grover, get to your safe place right now and anywhere along State Route 35 and that's from Blanche down towards Waterloo Springs into Grassland. So be careful there. Looks like we're getting some live video right now coming in from Jefferson County and this is our weather alert unit. It looks like they're entering into uh, was that Arkadelphia Road and that is um, on Interstate 20. 
And so we are looking at our storm team. Again, this is our Arkadelphia Road. This is our weather alert unit. You can just see all of that rain coming down there. Difficult to drive in, but right now, good news. We don't have to worry about a lot of people driving on the roadways. So we appreciate them getting out there and uh, safely uh, getting some video for us. Look at the ponding on the roadways, though. That is very impressive, and this is why folks need to be very careful if they have to be out for any reason, because that's going to be a big issue is all this ponding on the roadways that we're going to be seeing tonight. All right, so looking at our velocity right now, a lot of wind right here. So this is where we're really going to uh, focus our attention right now, just because these situations seem to be evolving a little bit tonight. Each scan kind of tells a little bit of a different piece to the puzzle. So right now over Highway 273 uh, towards Reinhardt, if you live in the community of Reinhardt, go ahead and get to your safe place. Same with Broomtown along County Road 41 up towards New Moon. Get to your safe spot along County Road 99 and County Road 108. There is going to be some intense wind. Even if it's not a tornado, it's going to be very intense wind. We have some new information right now. I'll send it over to Nate. Yeah, just getting more, uh, more photos in, more pictures in from, uh, from around Central Alabama. We've got a new uh, photo in from, uh, from Center earlier this evening. Center Fire Department had to take a tree off of a house. Oh, wow. uh, and this is just, uh, just more damage uh, in and around uh, that part of Central Alabama that uh, has been worked over a couple of different times yeah. now. And you mentioned it right when we went on with this brand new tornado warning that uh, they've seen uh, not one, but literally two storms move over basically the same place. We were talking yeah. about this just around uh, 8 o'clock this yep. evening uh, and uh, so they, they get another round of this. So folks in center, you're clear of this right now, but earlier tonight you had to deal with it. Uh, there's a lot of trees in this part of central Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about it. It's a beautiful part of the state, but uh, but right now uh, dealing with uh, just more damage in and around uh, in and around that area in Cherokee County. Yeah, thanks, Nate. And yeah, just a, it's a good reminder for all of us that you know, just because you've been hit once doesn't mean you can't get hit again. So we have to make sure that we're very prepared overnight tonight and that we have to do our part to make sure that we're getting those weather warnings. That means make sure your weather radio is turned on this evening. Make sure it's plugged in, it's charged, the batteries are in it, and also turn your phone on. You will get those weather emergency alerts on your phone. And so that that's imperative. It makes a terrible noise, uh, but that terrible noise is because it's supposed to wake you up out of your slumber. So that's the point what, that we want to make for these overnight storms. Speaking of the overnight storms, they are racing through Mississippi. They're actually going to get to Mississippi through Mississippi and may start getting back into Alabama before we hit midnight, as a matter of fact. So I want to show you that very quickly. This is our uh, I'll take our Birmingham off and I'll, I'll move to our national map. It'll it'll overdo the rain for us just a little bit, but that's just because it's a composite radar. But uh, here's what we're looking at. Look at these severe thunderstorm watches for East Mississippi. Now, if you remember about an hour ago, it was just issued and there was hardly a drop of rain in the state. We were just tracking these storms in uh, the Delta of Mississippi, which is located over here by the Mississippi River. These storms have now just raced through the Mississippi Delta. Now they're lining up from Holly Springs to Oxford, Mississippi. And now we have severe thunderstorm watches for all of Northeast Alabama. And I think what the Storm Prediction Center and National Weather Service are trying to do is determine the counties back to our west that they've already cleared what type of watches need to go into effect. Without a doubt, there will be a watch, but it's a... Just, just reissued a tornado watch. For, they canceled the tornado watch for Bibb, Green, Hale and Tuscaloosa County, but they reissued a tornado watch for Chilton, Clay, Cleburne, uh, Coosa, Jefferson, Shelby, St. Clair, and Talladega counties, and that is until midnight. Okay. So another hour and 15 minutes, um, and uh, they continued the tornado watch until midnight for Blunt, Cherokee, and Etowah County. So, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll watch it, but that, that, that line out of Mississippi that's, uh, that's moving toward our northwestern counties is still you know, looking pretty scary too. I, yeah, I, I, I would think that a severe thunderstorm watch would be coming, but I, at I, a I minimum, guess not. yeah, yeah. And actually, I thought that's what you were about to tell me is yeah. that they went ahead and issued that one there. But now it looks like the southeastern edge of our kind of the southern fringe of our viewing area is going to have that watch. But as I showed you all in our 10 o'clock hour during the newscast, those air temperatures are still pretty warm even at this hour of the night for Clanton over towards Alexander City. And keep in mind, Clanton. And Alexander City have not seen a lot of activity today. 
Therefore, their atmosphere is ripe for a lot of these storms in South Alabama. And we were kind of mentioning before it's Montgomery's turn for a lot of these storms, meaning the Montgomery viewing area and, and market, because now they're having to get faced with a lot of these severe thunderstorm warnings. And just like we did earlier today, tracking these thunderstorm warnings that evolved into tornado warnings, and they devolved back to severe thunderstorm warnings. And it's kind of wash, rinse, repeat throughout the afternoon and early evening for us. Now with all that untapped air down to our south. That's what folks are seeing there. Here's what's interesting. We already have some severe thunderstorm warnings that are issued for portions of Mississippi that don't have watches on them. So uh, I would be pretty certain that they will extend those watches into Alabama at a minimum. And then we'll continue tracking these warnings. But right now it looks like a new severe thunderstorm warning for Columbus as well as Louisville. Looks like we're also getting some new video out of Cherokee County. Nate, I believe this is exactly what you were talking about with some of this damage there in That's northern it. Cherokee County. So uh, this storm is really exiting Cherokee County right now. But the storm video that you see behind me and now in front of me, there it is. All right, so that is a tree clearly has fallen on a house. So, uh, so folks are going to have to you know, resolve that situation. And there's, we are getting lots of reports of trees down. So let's go ahead and look back on this radar very quickly of this storm up in uh, Cherokee County. It's really starting to move out. It's heading towards New Moon, Grover, and Berry Springs as we speak. And I know if you're tuning in right now, you may be thinking, this is way far away from where I live, but this is our viewing area and there's people up here and they, uh, they need to get these warnings. So that's why we're staying on the air with these particular tornado warnings even though they're on the fringe of our state they're very much a part of our viewing area so new moon grover uh, make sure that you are in your safe place right now this storm system is about to cross over that georgia state line much like we saw before that extension of that tornado warning now into northwest georgia so anywhere from barryton to somerville that storm is about to head your way so jamestown you're cleared now blanche you're clear taff you're clear and you're already starting to see the back edge of that tornado warning starting to expire and the severe thunderstorm warning has kind of filled in back behind it to include the city of Fort Payne down towards Dogtown and Loveless. So right now we're really focused on Broomtown up through Berry Springs, Jamestown, Grover, get to your safe spot, howling winds along this leading edge and seeing just some signs of rotation, not as well defined as the same storm system that moved in before. But I think what we're going to find tonight and especially as you wake up tomorrow morning, there's going to be some damage that you're going to be waking up to if you're not already uh, awake and tending to that damage. But there's going to be a lot of trees down too. things that we may not see overnight, may not realize that happened until daylight tomorrow. So I think we're going to be in for a lot of trees down for our Monday. And again, a lot of that's attributed to straight line winds. You don't have to have a tornado to topple those trees. You just need really, really strong winds. All right, so let's revisit our radar very quickly because I do want to kind of recap what we're seeing. This storm is leaving Berry Springs right now and it's beginning to move out of Alabama and into Georgia. I'm still very interested in the storms that are happening back in Mississippi and I'm still very watchful on what's happening in South Alabama. Here's one benefit to the storms moving across I-65 south of Montgomery right now is it looks like most of that energy is going to stay south of Montgomery. It doesn't look like it's going to move north much, but the reason for the tornado watches is because of these little isolated dots that you see on the map here. So from Clanton down towards Wetumpka, that would indicate where we could possibly see some of these storms growing and maybe even producing some areas of rotation because these storms are entering into an area that has a pretty untapped atmosphere. But we're also seeing some rain falling ahead of this line from Clanton to Alexander City. That may help to drop temperatures and help to stabilize. But what's happening out ahead of this main line is the winds are incredibly strong with something we call the low level jet. That low level jet is literally like a uh, it's it's basically like lighting a powder keg. So you have all of this really warm, wet air. It's just sparking all of these storms. And that's why we see all these storms firing off along this line is you have all of this moisture rich air moving in from the Gulf of Mexico.
Mexico, and that's the fuel that these storms need. Just like your car needs gasoline to go, this uh, these storms need a lot of wet air to thrive and to continue to propagate. That's why we don't need as much daytime heating overnight when we have a very potent low level jet, when we've got a really moisture rich atmosphere, and when we've got some instability that was already created previous in the day. Previously in the day, we don't have to. Uh, we don't really. Uh, let go of a lot of that energy overnight. So um, so that's why you may be wondering, it's so late at night, why are we still dealing with some of this severe weather? Uh, and, and that's why we have a lot, of, a lot of energy still left over in the atmosphere right now. All right, so here's what it looks like for North Alabama, a new severe thunderstorm warning. This time it extends down into Calhoun County, includes the city of Jacksonville. Looks like Aniston's going to stay just to the south of that, but it's still going to be a strong storm. Let me uh, see if I can pull up our Gadsden Tower Cam really quick because we'll get a view of this. All right, there's Gadsden. We've been watching this all night. Um, it looks like that rain is really falling. I mean, obviously the rain is heavy enough. It's covering the, the lens of the camera there. That's why it looks like it does. That's all because of the, the rain and the wind mixed together. And did you just see that flash of lightning illuminate the skyline there? So we are seeing quite a bit of lightning outside here in Gadsden. This is Rainbow Drive in Etowah County in downtown Gadsden. Uh, good news, there's no one on the road. That's exactly what we would like to see as meteorologists. Uh, but there's also some strong winds moving into Etowah County as we speak. Some other spots that are getting hit hard by the rain. Now we're starting to see that rain taper ever so slightly in Birmingham. Rain is still falling, but the gustiest winds, the strongest winds have started to push out. So uh, fortunately, there may be some improvement here in, uh, in the Birmingham metro. Let's go back to seeing the storms here. So there's Birmingham. So you can see that storm's really just pushed east of I-65, but we're really tracking some strong winds over towards Gadsden, all the way up towards Fort Payne, including the city of Jacksonville. And notice with these particular storms too, as we're tracking a lot of these, these are going to, to remain not only very strong, but creating those gusty winds. I just noticed this. Check this out on our storm velocity. We're looking at this little Boeing feature right here from Gadsden, basically from Hoax Bluff down towards Crystal Springs, and that could be producing a considerable amount of wind. Again, this would be more of a straight line wind event, not necessarily a rotation, but uh, definitely going to have some very strong winds along this leading edge from Leesburg down through Ball Play, Hoax Bluff into Angel. That wind is howling through right now down towards Leatherwood, Boiling Springs. It will be moving east, including the cities of Jenkins, Burns, White, White Plains, up towards Sanford Springs, and then Cedar Bluff, the city of Alexis, and Bluffton. All right, let me zoom out because I would like to put a track on this, but this is going to be one that we do, do more of a squall line track on this one, and it will include the city of Center for that severe thunderstorm warning. We'll send it to the Weather Center with Nate. Yeah, I did want to uh, mention real quick.